Here we go! Welcome everyone to episode 64 of the One Up XP show, the last episode of the One Up XP show for 2022. Well, actually, this will air on the last day of 2022 and also air on the first day of 2023. That's, that's a conundrum. Uh, but today we are taking you into modded Minecraft. Now, for a long time, I've had a modded Minecraft server and we played all the mod six. Well, I have updated, if you recall back a few episodes, we had the CEO of Bisect hosting on. Max Pod Kidkin, and I've moved over to their servers, but I also upgraded to all the mods eight, and there's some amazing new things in there, but I wanted to show you some of the cool things that you can build within all the mods eight, and if you do want to join our server, you can obviously get your permission, get permission from your parents first if you're that young, but it is open to everyone. All we ask is you be super respectful, do not break anything. Do not take anything of anyone's. But you can join. We'll have more details on that coming up after the highlights. But check this out. We build some amazing things in all the mods 8. All right. So this is the new area. You may recall I had a lot of chests. They are gone. Why, you may ask. This is why. This. Is a storage unit that can hold up to 17,000 items. Yes. This is my modular unit. Boom. So now, like, we put this right here. Boom. So I need to make a storage card. Okay. So we got one card. So there we go. And then if we lock it. Yes. So we can have up to 100 items in here, chat. So like if you did it this way. Boom. 27 items. See? And then you just smash that, pick it up. That can hold up to 300. Stacks of 300. Not 300 items. Stacks of 300. So this is uh, my nuclear reactor. Let's kick her on. Boom. You can see. You're like, wait, what, how's it there? Well, let's go outside. You, you, you say, I want to see more. You got it. We'll show you more. Here is the nuclear reactor. This is uh, where it, the uh, waste that it spits out. And this is where you put the uranium to power it. And this is the uh, cable to get the power up to my storage unit. We'll, we'll make it tidier here in a little bit, but you know. So uh, some may say, well, how do you make this? Um, with all the mods eight, uh, you have several uh, power options. And uh, we made a nuclear reactor. Some reactor casing, uh, as well as a reactor access port. And another re re reactor access port. And then a reactor power tap. And then on the inside where you turn it on, you have a reactor terminal. And you can see uh, the heat. Obviously, it's a little warm, but it's fine. We don't have enough power to explode this thing. It's fine. Um, so we turned it on. We go up here. And look, it's alive. So we have two disks here, two storage disks, uh, 1K and 16K. So when you go in here, here's all of our items. <laughs> it's a lot of items, chat. So uh, we currently have 15.8 thousand items in here. Uh, we are definitely going to have to build more storage shortly. Uh, but yeah, everything is in here. Cool. And you can craft from here. So, like, 
if you were to say, uh, first of all, let's put these the stuff back here. Uh, if you were to say, oh man, I wanna I wanna build a, a slab, right? Uh, you know, you find the wood that you have in here. See, like oak planks. We'll, we'll say oak slab. We'll make it easier. Uh, go like that. You go bam. Put it there and see it automatically grabs it from your inventory and boom there you go six oak slabs so pretty cool so we need to build wind generator we're gonna get like four of these things man one two three four there we go All right, and then we need another one. Boom. All right. I think what we want to do, one, we want to get rid of this stuff. Um, all right, so we did that. Yeah, we can do it this way. That's fine. Then one right here. Sure. And then one right here. And then one right here. And then if we take... Because this is energy cable. This is energy pipe. So would energy cable work? Oh. I think I was using the wrong thing, chat. I want to see if I can actually generate enough power. So if we do this, there you go, like that. Let's see if I can generate enough power. I don't know if I can, but it'll be interesting. Yo, what up, Carol? So if we go here, no, here. Oh my God, I actually generate enough power. So it's gotta be working, right? And if I put this in here, oh my God, it works. Sweet, dude. What's the jewels on this? 50 jewels? 20 FE per tick. So let's go see what I'm actually generating with these winds. So I don't need a nuclear power plant anymore. That's cool. So I'm creating 80. So I'm, pre oh, I'm okay. 384 FE per tick. 384 times four. I'm creating 1,536 FE per tick. 1,583 FE per tick. What is this generating? I'm creating... ...852 RF per tick. RF equals 1 FE. Okay, so it's the same. So this is, cre I'm creating double that of my starting uh, nuclear power plant, or my, my reactor. So my reactor, my reactor actually, so hold on, I'm going to put this here too, so I can charge it. Um, my reactor is actually half of what my wind is generators are generating that's insane dude those are a little uh, op you know what i'm saying there we go and that should be charging now 
If you're wondering what this little box is that I'm charging, there it goes. That is cool. Um, this is a portable power source. Dude, that's insane to me. That's crazy. That's crazy awesome. Uh, we need to create a waypoint, though. Um, let's build a waypoint real quick. Oh, we also need to create more bookcases. Um, so, waypoint. Um, pick that up. Pick that up. Cool. We got another waste up. So yeah, pretty cool. We ended up starting off with the reactor, but switched to more of the wind energy, and we actually doubled the power output by just four wind uh, generators, and uh, it's pretty cool. Um, but there's so much more that you can do with this. I actually made a kitchen. Um, there, <laughs> the mods are pretty much limitless uh, when you jump into all the mods. Eight. So if you do want to join, if you have a computer and you're able to play mod in Minecraft, you just have to hop into my Discord. There's a Minecraft section and all the information is there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the link down below. If you're watching this on TV, you can email me at michaelstevens at 9and10news.com. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, any of the socials, and just DM me, and we'll get you the Discord link, and we'll get you into modern Minecraft. Now, if you're just a normal Minecrafter, we also have the 1UP XP server for normal Minecraft. But coming up next, we sit down with Keith Brown, who is the creator and host of Gameplay, which is a show that airs every Saturday evening on Interlock and Public Radio. We'll have that next. And welcome everyone to another 1UP XP show podcast slash interview. And keeping with the theme as of late, we're talking video game music. And today, I uh, have a local guy here for you, Keith Brown, who is a classical music host, creator, and executive producer of Gameplay, uh, which you can find on the Interlock and Public Radio, and also syndicated nationally. Keith, thank you, brother, for being here, man. I appreciate it. Michael, thank you so much for having me. It's awesome, awesome to be here. But let's get into uh, what is, you know, gameplay. Back in, I want to say about 2019, our executive director, Peter Payette, uh, heard me going on in a meeting about, I, I was really excited because we have some, we have some, uh, some game music recordings in our library, we, in, in our broadcast library. Mm -hmm. And ba even back then we had some. And I was really excited about that. And he heard me going on passionately about some article that I had read in the New York Times about, you know, video game music is so cool. It's a, a way to bring people into to music, classical music and live music. And he heard me going on about this. And he's like, you know, he must have just heard something in my voice. And he said, can you do a show? Could you make a show, a weekly show about video game music that could air? And I was just like, my heart was just like, <laughs> you know, I was so excited. And and it was cool that that was such a gift. It has been such a gift to me because it brought me back to kind of my my nerd roots, mm -hmm. and it let me combine and and kind of circle back into the world of video games in a way that I had kind of been out of touch for a little while, and then suddenly it became my job and my passion kind of mixed together, and uh, and it's just it's it's just such a gift. Do you think this plays into the game's popularity? Do you think Mario would have been as visible and as big and he was the first one that we all really know but would he be that big without the music no i mean i i look i mean i i can't i guess suppose i can't say anything absolute but i right. i feel i feel no yeah because i think this goes back to you know the infancy of digital games of, of video games in you know at the beginning when the technology was was you know, it was pushed to the limit just to have any kind of visual at all. You know, and, and we talk about text, you know, text-based games. Uh, the addition of sound, like in the beginning of the arcade era, the attract function of just like a, a, that big, colorful arcade cabinet lighting up and yep. going like, pew, you know, like big, powerful sounds grab your attention and pull you in. Guaranteed, people, people would not have been, you know... Uh, playing space invaders or whatever uh in japan you know in in when that was really popular you yeah. know there were in, you know there were entire arcades that that the only thing they had was a whole bunch of space invaders cabinets you know yeah. uh and that's in the you know the early days of, of game sound where there was very little space oh, for music yeah. at all and it was extremely labor intensive but even so that sound function it transcends it goes beyond you know it really like 
it's it's way more than the sum of its parts all of a sudden. And I I totally think that that it's like that that little bop at the you know the the original ground theme for Mario that we that we're thinking of, yeah. uh, it just like it just taps into your fun center and right. it just it communicates something wordless but really powerful about what you're about to do. All right, I'm going to have a good time. This is going to be fun. We're running, we're jumping, we're, we're, you know, we're, yeah. we're smoking bricks, you know, and all this, um, the music communicates something about the game. And I just don't think it would have penetrated the, the, just the cultural consciousness without, without that connection to music. And the one up XP show will be right back with more from Keith Brown, the host and creator of gameplay from interlock and public radio. But if someone is looking to pursue video game music, or has an interest in it, where should they start? That's an awesome question. I I think now this is again with the caveat that I I'm coming as a a professional who who presents this music. I'm I'm not a composer, right? So I, so there's a lot of nuance that I'm not going to be aware of. But I would say, and I, I think a lot of composers that I've spoken to for the show and stuff would back me up on this. I I think if you're interested in making music for games, I think you need to play games. Mm -hmm. And I think that you need to play a lot of games and play a lot of different kinds of games. Right. And and then when you play them, play them in a different way where you're being more intentional about lis listen to the music that is happening at a given moment. Right. Listen to how listen to how the music changes as you interact with the game. Well, I, whatever it is that you're doing, pay really pay attention to to that. And then um I would also say, you know there's never been an easier time for people to self-educate about things like audio software and right. recording and things like that. There are, there are tons of, I mean, there are free softwares out yeah. there um, that, that enable you to kind of play around with music production. Um, and I would say just, yeah, play games and play with audio software a little bit and, and just, just try to create stuff and play. I think that that sense of play is really important for probably any creator, right? You know, you you got to have a sense of play, mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah, you really need to immerse yourself in your medium if you're going to learn how game music works, how it ticks. Whether it's eight bit or full orchestra play music in a game, obviously this one's very tough. But what makes it good? So, <laughs> it's a good question, an interesting question. I I couldn't tell you. I will say that I couldn't tell you probably what makes something good in an objective sense because you know i don't think that exists I, I think that maybe i probably couldn't give you the formula for that i think if the music serves the player's experience mm. then it's good and that means um you know i think great game music um as we see you know it can interact with the player in a way it can respond to the player and I think if the game, if the music fits the vibe of the world that's being created in the game, then whatever sounds are used, they're they're legit and they're good. They're classical music. You may have heard of the platformer Celeste. Yeah. Which is gorgeous. You know, it has this gorgeous like pixel art kind of influenced style, but it's kind of painterly as well. Like, beautiful colors and and Lena Rain's soundtrack. Oh, it's also a game about wrestling with anxiety and stuff. There's like an inner struggle in the game. And that her music for that is 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 this beautifully layered synthesizer sound. There's a little bit of like that callback to old, you know, to, to there's lots of synths and some older game sounds. Right. It now when I look at that game and see gameplay footage and listen to the music, it's it's a, a favorite score of mine. I, I can't separate the music from the game because I think it fits too. It's so perfect. It's okay. I can't even imagine any other music being there. Right. I think that that's to me that means. That it is doing its job. It's good. That's great music. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Shovel Knight. Jeez, Shovel Knight, the <laughs> indie title with this unbelievable yeah. 8 bit soundtrack. It's like a modern day composed 8 bit soundtrack. It's virtuoso music. It's so busy and exciting and, and thrilling by the same token. So that that's great music. But also, God of War Ragnarok, you right. know, just came out. And oh, boy, yeah. this, you know, it's like, for this Norse mythology inspired world and it's gods and giants and dragons and, you know, and, and it's got this huge orchestra and a choir singing in old Icelandic, uh, you know, you hear that music and you're like, wow, this is like getting my heart pumping for right. this big fight or what you know, or it's so thrilling. Um, and that fits that world to a T. 
Um, so to me, that's what's good, you know. Or you got games like Streets of Rage, uh, four that just came out where you know it's high paced, it's kick butt, yes. like it's it's up to it's up to what you're doing. The new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that came out. I almost mentioned uh, Shredder's Revenge, right? Shredder's I Revenge, yeah. T. Lopez, his sound, his score, and by the way, T. Lopez, I believe, started his musical career. He's he's a very successful composer, who started out. Uh, doing YouTube remixes of like Sonic. Right, you know, right. To show off his skills and he got noticed. And again, my huge thanks to Keith Brown as we sat for an hour talking about everything that is game music. And his show is phenomenal. I have sat down and I've listened um, to many of his broadcasts. And if you want to listen to them, you can just go to interlockinpublicradio.org slash show slash gameplay or you can tune in Every Saturday night at 8 o'clock, do Interlock in Public Radio and hear Keith Brown present to you in fabulous fashion. Kind of the history and also a little bit of gameplay music. And it's anything from the actual gameplay music in the game to a little bit of the covers of that gameplay music. So a fascinating world and my huge thanks again to Keith for sitting down and talking to me. We have one last segment here on the One Up XP Show. We'll be right back. And that does it for this week's episode of the 1UP XP Show. Thank you so much for joining us. My huge thanks again to Keith Brown. And if you want to catch any of these full-length interviews, which can be an hour, hour and a half, you can catch the entire podcast slash interview over on the 9 and 10 News YouTube channel. Be good, stay safe, take care, have a wonderful 2023. I will see you guys next week.